Hi, this is Don Pren. Uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about estate planning and financial planning and we have the CEO of Innsmark. Innsmark's been developing software for life insurance agents and financial planners for the past 30 years. We have uh, Bob Ritter, CEO of Innsmark, here to tell us a little bit about uh, what's happening in the industry and why there is so much confusion uh, with regard to financial and estate planning and some things that, that we, we can do about it to help our clients. Welcome, Bob. Hey, Don. How are you? Good, good. Uh, so tell me just a little bit about when you develop the system. What's the system called again? Wealthy and Wise. Wealthy and Wise. And if you could, uh, I know uh, one of the things that you have noticed in the industry is that a lot of the estate and financial planning that's being done is not taking a, into account some really crucial uh, factors. Can you help us understand a little bit about that? Sure. I, I think one of the things that's most important is to get a complete grasp on the uh, asset and liability picture, asset by asset. Too many programs say, well, let's say we've got a net worth of $7 million. Regardless of the makeup of that, it could be mostly retirement plans, it could be mostly equities, it could be um, a you know, reasonable mix of a variety of things. That needs to be done asset by asset, because uh, without it, you're just going to guess at yield. You say, I'm worth $7 million, I can get 4% on it. That's crazy. You can't, can't do it that way. You have okay, to so w when you say asset by asset, give me an example of a couple different assets that someone might have. Equity accounts, uh, tax-exempt accounts, muni bonds perhaps. Real estate. Uh, real estate. Uh, lots of non-liquid. Art collections, a vacation home, personal residence. Do you plan to downgrade it within five years to move to Arizona, buy a smaller place? Are you going to enhance your mortgage? Okay, so, so what you're saying is one of the cornerstones of this wealthy and wise system is that you break down the client's assets into different categories. I, I think I understand that. Now, what's the next step? Uh, determine whether or not uh, there's some continuity to those assets, the house being a good example. Uh, are you going to stay in this house? Uh, are you going to increase the mortgage? Are you going to decrease the mortgage? What are, your, what are your intentions relative to your assets? I don't just want to snapshot what they are today. I want to know what you intend to do with them. Okay, I understand. So... Uh, beyond the asset class, what are some other things that you see that are crucial uh, to be done in the planning that are not being done? Most people fear running out of money more than any other single issue. It's absolutely a critical consideration you have to do when you're doing wealth, wealth planning. So once you get the asset base established, you have to determine what that client's desires are in terms of cash flow. So what you're saying is there's a disconnect sometimes between sort of how much people have in terms of total net worth and assets, that, that's sort of one number that they don't really relate to versus how much they're actually needing an income and what they're needing to spend and how long they're maybe going to live and inflation. So you're saying there's a disconnect between the asset number that people kind of you know, know about, but then they're really worried about their income and future income needs. Yes. So the, that the, makes sense. the, the system is designed to uh, basically predominantly and initially determine cash flow needs and then determine in the asset base what's the best way to get that cash flow. In other words, if you had an individual with a high yielding equity account and a CD and he starts to need income, what's the best place to take that income from? Do you raid, do you raid the equity account or do you raid the CD? Now, it gets more complicated when you have uh, seven or eight or nine or ten asset classifications. Uh, okay, so, so you know, I've got someone who's 70 years old, they've got significant assets, some are liquid, some are illiquid, they need X amount of income every year during their retirement years, you're going to project that out, but then this is interesting, you're also going to do an analysis to figure out the best place for them to get that income from those different assets. Do I have that right? Exactly right. The case to study we're going to talk about in a little, bit, little while, it's a couple at once, $250,000 a year in after-tax cash flow. Well, the first month of their retirement, they need $22,000 odd dollars to, to, to do that. Okay. Uh, where do they get that from? Nobody tells them. They, they may have gotten the best advice as far as asset allocation is concerned, but their, their advisor left and their first months have come up and the mom looks at dad and says, okay, we need $22,000. we got all these assets. Where do we take it from first? Okay, this is interesting. So you're, you're saying that the industry has been focused on asset allocation, which is where do I invest the money? How much risk do I take? But it has left out the crucial element of when I actually need some of the money, where do I go and get it? Well, the industry is focused on distribution planning, but not to the extent that I'm talking about. In other words, you need to know what your equity account can yield. 
you need to know what your munis are going to yield, uh, either aggressively or conservatively, based upon your client's desires. But try to determine, do I, need, do I have an account that's so weak that I can spend principal on that account and let the other ones accrue? Uh, the, the, the program that we put together, uh, regardless of the asset base, will tell you, take that first $22,000 out of this account. You know, I, I have to tell you, it just doesn't seem like it'd make that much difference. Where I get the money and, and you know, it just, it, just listening to you, that just doesn't sound like it, it doesn't make a huge the difference. The difference can be phenomenal. The case I'll show you will start on you, it's so big. The difference between taking it smart and taking it not smart. Like the difference between running out of money and having money throughout well, retirement? In the case I'm going to show you, you're, you're on the way to running out of money as opposed to having a growing net worth. Even Both plans took the same cash flow. One has got an increasing net worth, the other has a depreciating net worth with a major difference between the two. So you're saying the difference in doing this right could be devastating if you do it wrong for your yes. client. Yes. In other words, That's it could right. be the difference between your clients having increasing net worth throughout their retirement and clients running out of money during retirement. Or an increasing net worth that's got some room for some yields different than you expected, as opposed to one that would totally crater your, your, your estate if that were to happen. If you were to guess in the industry now, what percentage of the planners out there are looking at this issue and, and making solid recommendations about where money should come? I mean, what, what percentage of the planners out there are doing this now? As far as we can tell, only our wealthy and wise licensees are doing that. This is something that's unique to us. Uh, I don't know why. It seems so eminently logical, but I, don't, I haven't seen it anywhere else. Wow. So now tell us a little bit about, uh, you know, it's one thing for us to talk about this, and, and what you're saying makes sense, although, like I said, it, it's hard to understand why taking income from different asset classes would make that much difference. Uh, so it's, I guess we're at a point where you kind of need to prove it. Uh, and, and you know, how do you, let, let's say I was a client, how do you prove to me that I should take money out of my IRA, for example, instead of out of my equity account? I mean, how, how, do, you, how do you go about demonstrating that? Let me show you, because this all happens prior to tax planning. We'll do some tax planning as part of what we're going to do. But I, I don't want to do any of that until I can prove to you that this is a valid analysis. Part of the, part of the three or four points we've talked about, but the, probably the most critical point. Okay, so you have a software program called Wealthy and Wise. You put the client's assets in and how much, what, what interest rate they're earning on different things and their tax information. And you're saying that Wealthy and Wise then lets you do different, uh, different assumptions about different income coming from different places. And then you can kind of show a A, B, C, D. You can kind of show different yeah. options. Is that yeah. what we're going to see? Yeah, it'll, it'll optimize the order of uh, accessing cash flow, is what, which one it'll do. The, the algorithm okay. we build in will actually do that. It's a pretty complex calculation. I'm prouder of that than almost anything we've ever, we've ever put together because it's a, for the technically binded, it's a factorial solve, which means it's multiples of one times, two times, three. You got 10 assets, the program will tell you to go to lunch while it figures it out because it's such a huge, it's like 40 million calculations that it has to go through to That's the interesting. So it's looking at all the different asset classes of a particular client and case and it's running through the different ways it could take money, and then it's stacking them up and, and giving you the best priority of where to go, when. And you're saying that's a pretty complicated calculation, e even for yeah. a computer. And that doesn't mean you have to leave it that way. You might have someone say, well, I don't, I, that particular asset, I kind of want to leave that one alone. Well, you, you can move it, but the okay. program will solve it perfectly for you. And uh, most of the time, that's what, what, our, what, our, what our clients uh, utilize. Okay, so you're, you're, you're able now, let's... Let's see that, and you're going to go on the computer now and show us a sample case. Is that yes, what we're going to do? I am. Well, let's see it. Okay. The case study I want to share with you involves Simon and Ann Scott. They're age 55 and 50 and plan to retire in 10 years. They have the following liquid assets. A million in a CD, a million in muni bond fund, three and a half million in mutual funds, a half a million in Simon's IRA, half a million in Ann's IRA, six and a half million total liquid assets, plus 900000 in home value and personal property. Now, the yields should reflect what you and your client believe are reasonable. They could be level, as I've shown, or variable based upon schedules that you, you input. And incidentally, this is not the time for a Monte Carlo simulation for those who like to use that tool. Once an overall plan is designed, then an asset-by-asset asset Monte Carlo analysis may make sense. Okay, so let's assume Simon and Ann want $25,000 a month in after-tax retirement cash flow when they retire, compounding annually by 3% as an inflation offset. Imagine that it's the first day of their retirement. 
they need to withdraw 25000 From which account should they take it, and does it make any difference? You bet it does. Let's initially look at what we call strategy one bad logic, taking the money sequentially, first from Simon's IRA, then from Ann's, then from the equity account, then from the tax-exempt account, then from the CD, exhausting each one until you move on to the next. Let's see what Wealthy and Wise says about that kind of logic analysis. There they are in that, in that particular order. So let's check the results real quick. Well, you can see that their required and provided lines are met at the risk of cratering their net worth. Bad logic created, it creates bad net worth, as you can see in this example. Let's go back and hit the max net worth button. This is an absolutely terrific algorithm built into the system because what, we'll, what it will do is automatically reorganize the assets to produce the best possible results. And you're going to be surprised here at the difference. We check results this time, and we come up again with the same pattern of cash flow provided. And watch the net worth. Instead of 3.6 million, it's 16 million two. The difference between those two is pretty amazing. Um, going back to the analysis, there's your good logic. Because the order in which your liquid assets are accessed, accessed for cash flow uh, should be prioritized to produce the highest possible long range net worth. And to my knowledge, we're the only software company in the country that can do that. Uh, on the screens that follow, we'll refer to bad logic as strategy one and good logic as strategy two. Now, here are the two long range pictures, one atop the other. Uh, a nice part of the system, you can put them both together. Long range net worth has increased over strategy one by 339%, simply because you selected the most efficient distribution order. No other planning, uh, no changes other than how you get the money from what asset. Wealth to heirs obviously has an equally impressive difference. Wealth to heirs has increased by 286%, which makes sense because the net worth is higher in strategy two. I like this graphic about as well as any we have. The overall results at the end of, in this case, 40 years. You can show it at any point in time, but I picked 40 years here. Um, that's pretty powerful. It really dramatizes the differences. It's hard to believe that the contrast could be this striking, but it's due to the power of the Roth. Okay, with over 12.5 12 million more net worth, let's do a little tax planning by introducing another strategy, strategy three, which involves converting the Scots IRAs to Roth IRAs with the income tax on the conversion withdrawn from their assets. We'll add a wealth replacement trust, I'll call it WRT in places, that is funded with $2 million of survivor life insurance covering both Simon and Ann. With strategy three, the Scots will make annual gifts of $20,000 a year to fund the policy owned by the trust that's been drawn in favor of their three kids. The funds for the gifts are also withdrawn from their assets, so their retirement cash flow is unaffected. This may reduce net worth, maybe not. Let's see. Long range net worth has increased over strategy one by 436% due to the efficiency of the Roth IRAs. Even though the income tax of the Roth conversion is withdrawn from assets. Long range wealth to heirs has increased by an incredible 615% caused by the efficiency of the Roth IRAs and the life insurance in the trust. And there is, again, my favorite graphic. It's a wild graphic, isn't it? Caused by the combination of good logic plus Roth IRAs plus the trust-owned life insurance. Notice the makeup of the long-range net worth of strategy three. As you can see from the light blue area of the graph, it primarily consists of Roth IRA assets. A Roth is extremely, extremely valuable for heirs to inherit since all the withdrawals are free of income tax as opposed to an inherited IRA, which produces taxable income only. So let's take a last look at all three strategies. First, the bad logic, and then the good logic. Finally, good logic plus Roth plus wealth replacement trust. Imagine the reaction of a client who sees a comparison like this. You don't want your client seeing it from a competitor. It's just one example of the comparative logic of wealthy and wise. So I think the most important thing we've learned today 
is you can get these kinds of results within the framework of people understanding that their cash flow is of paramount importance. Where they get their cash flow is even more important. Preserving a comfortable level of living net worth is vital and making sure their children are well taken care of is the icing on the cake. Just about every other planning concept that you can think of can be illustrated and compared to wealthy and wise. It's a terrific system. One last thought. With the increase in the lifetime exclusion of estate assets to $5 million, 10 per couple, plus indexing for inflation, many of your clients will no longer need a plan to avoid estate taxes. One of the biggest markets for these clients will be the conversion of IRAs and 401ks to Roths and paying the income tax on the conversion by way of an asset withdrawal. A Roth conversion increases net worth and wealth to heirs and is easy to illustrate with wealthy and wise, and it is particularly powerful when coupled with a good logic, bad logic comparison. Don't overlook this market. You will do so at the peril of losing clients. So uh, that is a incredible difference in terms of doing the planning, figuring out where the income should come from uh, versus doing it and not doing it. And I think that's the point you're trying to make. Absolutely. So, okay, so this, the way you did this, the way you calculated all this, you used this software that you created, the Wealthy and Wise system. So uh, for someone who wants to get access to that system, you know, how, how, how does it work? How much does it cost? Where do they get it? Well, uh, you go to our website, uh, insmark.com, I-N-S-M-A-R-K.com, uh, and click on product and pick off the Wealthy and Wise icon. You can, you can read about it, uh, more, more about it, or you can order it. Uh, it's got an initial fee of $1,500 and a monthly fee of $50 a month. Uh, monthly fee covers all enhancements, and we enhance it quite rarely, regularly, and uh, covers uh, uh, system maintenance, uh, tech support, and so forth. Uh, yeah, it's really, it's really an amazing system. If, and you, it, if you want to talk to somebody about it for some reason, you could call 888 Insmark and speak to somebody, uh, one of our account executives about it. That's great. Well, um, we hope you've enjoyed uh, our discussion with Bob Ritter from Insmark about retirement and estate planning. And uh, we certainly hope this has been useful for you.